Yo, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome in. Sorry, I'm eating some red beans. Just left a uh, field trip with my daughter, and um, it's very fun. She goes to school on LSU's campus, like place U High, and so we got to uh, <clears throat> we're gonna tour the LSU locker rooms, too. Ooh, yeah, go on Tiger Stadium, Death mm -hmm. Valley. You know, uh, Death Valley gonna be 100 years old this Damn. year, Aaron Murray, and so mm -hmm. um. A new bigger video board got some led lights coming in wait y'all are behind in the led light game come on t what's going on i know i know That's... i know um and you know i think look i think it'd be overdone but also i think led lights are actually objectively pretty tight yes like it's yes. it's really cool I, I don't love it when it goes like black in the stadium although that still is kind of a sight to behold because it reminds you how dark it is actually outside when these games mm -hmm. are being played without the genius of human ingenuity but like when alabama i don't know how georgia does it but when alabama paints that shit red mm -hmm. and nick saban was standing on the sideline i mean that was some real intimidating like evil empire mm -hmm. type stuff that's that's the good stuff so i'm looking forward to lsu because i don't know uh how many purples i've seen from the led lights you know no, like, I, I, I don't think I don't first. Think I, that's what I'm saying. I don't feel like I've ever seen anything just swathed and bathed in purple. That's what I was gonna ask. Like, how intimidating is purple? It is royalty. It is the color of royalty, so that's yeah. pretty sweet. Uh, Scott in the chat, that a boy, eight ninety three, hodl, hodl. You can look. You can look a little. Uh, uh, what? What? I'm not. Actually, I'm not even gonna ask. I don't care. Um, <laughs> yeah, you could look a little. I mean, purple could look a little alien, like a little intimidating, yeah. right? Uh, I, I think it'd be real tight if somebody was green. Is anybody green in the SEC actually? No, because that no. would be, I mean, that would be that real, like, otherworldly alien kind of like, uh, the Pelicans have these uniforms that are like the Shadow Man from uh, Princess and the Frog. You know, they've got these, mm -hmm. they call them the Skeletons, it's got like a Pelican uh, skeleton and it's all that kind of sickly green of voodoo. And when you're playing the badass basketball, the Pelicans are, it's really tight looking. And yeah. they do this like green smoke thing before the UF could do green. Could Florida do green? Uh, I think of them as orange and blue. That's, that's um, yeah. the first one. They're, they're orange and blue. Yeah, but they, I mean, alligators are green though. Yeah, I know. Their could. point. You could. Maybe you that's could the closest to. one. Um, Surfer Boy says they're way too drunk at Death Valley to do the lights too heavy. It would scare the swamp people. <laughs> no, I mean, look, uh, Jav Solo, it's intimidating when you have over a hundred thousand to tell you to suck that tiger dick, bitch. Yeah, it would. I mean, that, that, that would be I love I, Is that, is that, is that truly, does everyone know what STTDB means? Yeah, that's what that means. Wow. Yeah. I was like, what the, what is STTDB? Oh, oh suck yeah. I guess. That, see. Wait, suck that tiger, tiger. dick, bitch. Okay. Yes. There we nice. go. Wow. Um, and of course, it's somewhat problematic. Uh, if you wanted to argue in favor of it, you would say that the bitch is not gender specific, but you know, you're kind of, uh, I don't know. That said, um, it does seem to be one of the cheers that gets both the males and females going in the stadium for whatever it's worth. Um, that, that's why you can no longer play neck, though, because that's what the entire stadium would yell when they would play neck, which is. <laughs> Just insane to hear 90,000 adults yelling that. Mm. Um, hit the like button, y'all. Where are we at? We have 15. No, crap. So close. 14.9K, guys. 14. Point nine. We got to get to 15 by Thursday. We got a couple days here. Oh, shit. John Schultz really wants us to mention Tony Alford leaving Ohio State for Michigan. Um, have you read about Tony Alford leaving Ohio State for Michigan, Aaron? Is that the coach? Was that the coach? Okay, so I got to be honest, John. He's been hitting me up on Twitter to talk about this, and I apologize because I know it's an interesting story. I have not looked it up yet. In fact, on today's show in general, I'm glad it's mailbag day. Yeah. I'll be taking questions from the chat and whatnot because I, um, you know, normally I like to do a lot of prep for the shows. This is kind of a coming in hot day mm. for your boy as uh, I was at the field trip with my daughter, a ton of fun. We go through the locker room, Tiger Stadium, way nicer than when I played. Yeah. Back in the day. Um, and then uh yeah, we had like a little picnic out there, and then I cut it straight over here. Um, Aaron, do you know how Huey P. Long 
uh, got Tiger Stadium to be so big back in the day. No, he was back in it. the 30s. Uh, he built dorms into the stadium Ooh. so that um, you could justify it was either further expenses or size or whatever. Like you could justify spending on it because technically you were a state school spending on student housing. So my grandpa Ooh. back in the 50s actually lived in Tiger Stadium during his first couple of years at LSU. It's pretty awesome. Could and you I get into go, the actual stadium from your dorm? Like in the sense of yeah. like going to see oh, no, no. the field. Okay. When you look, when you look at Tiger Stadium next time, look at the windows on the lower level and then understand yep. those are all dorms. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Um, and, and when that hype video that I filmed for Tennessee before else you got their ass kicked two years ago, uh, we actually got to film that in those dorm rooms and they've been abandoned since like the seventies. And bro, that shit was crazy. It was like so what's some in walking, there. Nothing. It's just like some decrepit, like Walking Dead type stuff. I mean, they've ripped out, what? knocked down most of the walls, yeah, but just the old, same. just old. You can just feel the history in that building. It's crazy. Mm. Um, you, could feel, you could feel all the, all of the. Let me get it one more time. The STTDB going on in those rooms, right? And there was certainly a lot of that in the 70s. There was, was a lot there. of it in the 70s. Uh, and a lot the of 30s, 40s, there. 50s. I wonder how much, how, I wonder when blowjobs kind of hit their popularity <laughs> inflection point, right? Like in the 50s, were blowjobs a big deal? Are we, are we, here, here's what I always think about because it feels recent, right? It feels like mm. our, our, you know, our, how recent. Our, well, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, do you think in the 50s, people were getting blowjobs and giving them? Well, I just think like rap music has is, is, is definitely made it seem more popular, I, but I think it was, I it's always happened. I don't think that I would have tied rap music specifically as a reason for increased fellatio. Why not? Um, you don't, but, you don't hear like the disco music back <laughs> in the day talking about giving PJs. Uh, I think it's true. so much more. I think it's like you're like a 12 year old kid listening to rap in your mom's car. And all of a sudden the rapper's talking about like it just. It's more common, you know. Just, uh, may, may, well, yes, I, I would say that, yes, we become sexualized as society yes. more. Like, I, I would agree with that. Um, I just wonder in the 50s, this fellatio was a normal thing for college kids to perform with one another. I mean, certainly something like Animal House maybe point to it being mm -hmm. so. But Scott Dice, is this true? He says he has sex with one of his Spanish teachers in those dorm rooms when he was at LSU. Work out, Scott. It's it? pretty, pretty cool. Um, all right. Sorry. I, I don't know how this, um, I don't know how this starts. Server voices, Aaron S T Bob, if he knows what H B T F D means, Ugh, I'm afraid of what that means. Do you know what that means? I don't, I swear. I've seen it a million times. Probably don't still know what it means. You're such a nerd, dude. Look at you, dude. Um, all right. So on today's show, uh, we now know Kalen DeBoer's salary. Mm -hmm. So there's one, it's a, kind of one of the great pastime of sports is talking about another man's money. Yeah. And so uh, we'll get into that. Um, we also have Clemson a day after Aaron Murray told you the fight in the ACC was not over, which I want to be clear. I never said the fight was over, but yes, we did do it. No, I didn't. Yes, I knew you were yes, going to try to paint it this way. Yes, you fucking no. did. Just take uh, the LT. Just take not, that L. I'm not. I'm not I'm take not. the L. I'm not. Uh, Goat Dog says it's how about them fucking dogs? Come, uh, on, yeah. Come on, dude. Get it. Get up, dude. Um, Lock has says fellatio has been happening for as long as humans have been around. There's references to it from ancient Peru and classical Rome. No, no. Okay. To be fair, I know like if human beings could put something in their mouth that feels good, like I know we've been doing that. I guess I mean more culturally here in America, right? Because we see, you know, we were formed with these Puritan ideals and we're very fussy about sex. And so I'm just more wondering, like, if I went out in the fifties, would you have a chance of meeting someone and later that night, maybe giving cunnilingus or receiving fellatio? I just wonder, I mean, certainly I would imagine it's more common today, but I don't know, maybe some of the old heads can help us out a little bit. Um, but either way, like, I'm pretty sure a lot of that was like, like, but both cunnilingus and fellatio were going on in spades yeah. in those old dorm rooms, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, all right. So you, you just want to dive into the Clemson one first then, since you seem to want a victory lap over it. I would love to start the show by victory lapping all over you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes. Clemson has filed a lawsuit against the ACC, which means the conference is now, uh, facing lawsuits from both Clemson and Florida state. Aaron, 
Yesterday, I said that the 14-team playoff keeps college football together. Uh, and you said that, well, but the ACC's fight is not over yet, right? And, of course, Clemson's mm-hmm. filing this lawsuit because they just basically got forced to agree to a deal in which they will receive half the money each year out of the TV revenue of the schools that they will be directly mm-hmm. competing with. Um, so what's your interpretation of this lawsuit then, Mr. Smart Guy? Well, I mean, the interpretation is that they want out. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they 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 see the money being lost once again to the Big Ten, to the SEC, the the sitting in the room with the decision makers, knowing that you're at the kids' table and uh, the Big Ten and the SEC are at the adult table. Like, that's not a good feeling if you're Florida State or Clemson or the Carolinas or Miami. Like, you view your brand as one of the biggest brands in college football, yet you are not in charge of the next direction in the next phase of college football. And it's humbling. It's frustrating. I'd be pissed off as hell. Florida state obviously has voiced their concerns for a couple of years now. Clemson here and there is somewhat voiced it. Now this is their real big push saying like enough's enough already. So, I mean, when you look at it and I'm looking at the, the Pete Dam article that just came out on ESPN and you see unenforceable when it comes to the grant of rights, uh, are they consistent with on, the plain speaking, language that's of that's the that's agreement. Right. You're saying that's what Clemson, what is Clemson trying to argue? They're trying to argue the grant of rights should be unenforceable? Yes. The grant of rights and exit fees calling the withdrawal penalty unenforceable. Um, I mean, I guess we'll see from what I read in that on three article, it looks like Clemson's been working on this as long as Florida State has. Mm-hmm. They've just been doing it uh, in the shadows uh, more, more so than Florida State's very vocal efforts. Um, I guess, though, my reaction is, does this change anything? If Florida State hasn't found a way out yet, if Clemson hasn't found a way out, like there, I, I still don't. It feels like they have an angle they're taking, but I don't know that it sounds like that they have a legal slam dunk. I don't think they do. Anything. No, no, I don't think they do, or they would have already taken that route and moved. Like Florida State would have been gone a year ago if they could have gone out of this grant of rights. I think it is ironclad. I think it is very difficult, uh, almost impossible to get out of it. I think they're now going the route of how do we make a circus out of this and pressure the ACC into doing something. So, yeah, so here's here's a direct uh, quote from uh, Clemson's lawsuit. Quote, without a judicial declaration of its legal rights, which have been openly challenged by the ACC, Clemson mm-hmm. is unable to pursue a wide range of strategic alternatives that may be necessary for its continued success in collegiate athletics and as an institution. By espousing an inaccurate interpretation of the grant of rights agreements and allowing that interpretation to proliferate throughout the media, the ACC has cast a harmful cloud of doubt on Clemson's ability to engage in meaningful discussions with other conferences and media providers regarding potential future collaborations and or to negotiate alternative revenue sharing proposals among ACC members. For Clemson to move ahead and ensure that it may continue to act in furtherance of its institutional message, mission, that cloud must be lifted. So to me, not being a lawyer, just mm-hmm. being somebody who ate a plate of red beans, nice. um, I think the key here. So obviously, they're trying to argue um, that, like they said, their, their, their ability to negotiate these TV contracts, talk to other conferences about what they bring mm-hmm. to the conference, have been hindered, that people aren't interested in dealing with them because, well... <laughs> they think they're not allowed to deal with them. I think the key line is here by espousing an inaccurate interpretation of the grant of rights agreements. That is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Like that's what Clemson and Florida state are going to have to prove. You're telling me it's an inaccurate interpretation. How? Yeah. You know, because yeah. they're saying they're basically saying, well, the ACC's painting this inaccurate picture, this false picture, and then they're telling everybody about it and everybody's accepting it, but that's not the case. But they still haven't told us necessarily why mm. that's not the case. Um, I mean, do you not agree with the fact like if, they, if there was a way to get out, like this, this, this interpretation would have been brought to light by now and Florida State would be farther along the path of, of, of exiting the ACC? Well, that's why it feels like a... Um, that's why it feels like a play, you know. That, yeah. That's why it feels yeah, like, a, it like a it's like a media play. Like, it's it's a deep ball here. Yeah, yeah. they're they're they maybe may, their lawyers have likely tried to find some way of phrase of of uh, framing 
the terms mm-hmm. of the grant of right agreements to try to present a loophole. Now, yep. maybe they feel, cause like I said, they've been operating the shadows more so than Florida state has. Right. So maybe they feel like, like they've, they've really crafted something good here and they're waiting to release it as the kind of look. And here's what the case actually is. Um, I would say this to my understanding. And I find this to be so funny mm-hmm. and so incredible, but to my understanding, you cannot look at the grant of rights agreement that the ACC has online. Like, I believe as a lawyer, they will not send you the documents. I'm, oh, I, I remember reading that the only way to study the documents is to actually go to the ACC offices, is to send your, like it's the Declaration of Independence, is to send your lawyers to the offices to read the exact copy. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try to look that up and double check, but in my head... I'm just imagining, like, okay, uh, somebody asked me what's better. Well, then listen, uh, I would say, I would say, and this is just from all my years of watching suits. Unless a lawsuit is put forward, then they don't technically have to present it to you. Um, I mean, once, once, once a lawsuit is presented, then then you know, obviously you go through discovery. It's not like a try one to be lawyer over here. You go through discovery, and then you have to then send everything you have you to have the to give, opponent. Yeah, maybe yes, so. Then you have to. Yeah. So, so may, maybe I'm wrong on that. I feel like I remember reading that because I was just tickled to death by it. Like mm-hmm. somebody asked, what's better, Return of the Jedi or Return of the King? I mean, for me, it's Return of the King. I love Lord of the Rings. And when I think about a grant of ride agreements that you can only read in person, I think about Gandalf when he rides to Minas Tirith and he's got like the, 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 the clouds of smoke ringed around his head and he's just rifling through scrolls and papers trying to find Isildur's writings on the ring to see if the ring that Frodo has is indeed the one ring like that. Th- those are Clemson's lawyers deep in the bowels mm. of ACC headquarters, trying to figure out a way to free their people from the clutches of ACC oppression. Um, I it's guess also like Game of Thrones when your yeah. twin, ha- your twin had a, to, to ride to Sam uh, Tarly. Yeah. Sam had to go ride to go find out the true secrets of, uh, you know, the true, the true. Yeah. What was he looking for? He was looking to try to heal grayscale, right? Yes. He was trying to try to heal grayscale. Which, you know, if you could heal grayscale that early easily, it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal, but, but whatever, that's, that's, yeah. that's either here nor there. See, somebody said you tuned out. No, Aaron was just getting his own fantasy analogy mm-hmm. ready to go. Thank I you was. very much. Give yes. my dog some credit. Okay. Was not as uh, was not as smooth as T Bob's, but I got a little little nerdy there. Tommy says Murray putting those nine seasons of suits to good use. Is that I where you learned married, about discovery? <laughs> I, I am I am married to an attorney, so I, I do listen to her every now and then. Oh, as well. okay. So no, so he has actual legal. That, that, so we need to bring Sharon Murray yes. in on this, yes. and, and we can get actual uh, legal advice. So I, I I here's where I'm at with this story. Um, I don't know that this moves it forward for me in any significant way until I see Clemson's specific argument as to how the grant of rights is being inaccurately interpreted Mm -hmm. and how it's being inaccurately applied. And then we can judge on our own merit. Do we think that this argument has, well, first off, does it have, uh, like, does it pass the general public sniff test? I won't even get into a legal snip test. We can talk to a lawyer about that, but I want to know, like if I hear their argument and I'm like, Oh, okay. You know what? Maybe there's something there actually. Cause right now I, I, it seems like, I mean, I completely understand why they're upset and I completely understand Mm -hmm. that. Yes. Their ability to negotiate their future is being capped and is being controlled. And that's gotta be incredibly frustrating, but I mean, it also looks like they they signed a. You signed it, damn it! You signed the yeah. damn contract. I, I, I'm I'm not saying I'm numb to it because I do think you get enough enough powerful people to the table that maybe you can make some sort of movement in the right direction. But until something is presented to me that goes above and beyond just trying to use big words in a in a ESPN article, um, it's hard for me to feel like there is a path out of this grant of rights. I just have not been you know, presented to any fact. Can... I always feel like lawyers are skilled enough and like you're kind of getting at where there's enough money or enough will there's a way, Mm -hmm. but it's so life or death for the ACC that it may not actually be the case. Right. Because if the ACC loses these two teams, they're going to start to, they're going to start to smell like the PAC 12 a bit. I don't know if I think they're a hundred percent done, but it's, but 
if you lose these two, then I imagine, um, Oh, that, that, that quote about precedence that I love so much. Um, but like, if, if you lose these two, then I imagine the door will open for UNC, sure. who we know is Miami. coveted by yep. uh, the SEC. Um, yeah, Miami, Virginia, getting yep. into those markets are attractive to the conferences. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I do feel you. This almost feels like a little – it could be like you're walking on the ice, right? No, and it, is, it is the Pac-12. And then it just shatters. I mean, the Pac-12 lost – you know, they lost Los Angeles – then you lose Oregon and, and Washington. And then from there, it was just like floodgates are open. We're out of here. Um, because at that point, like, where is a deal to be made when it comes to creating any sort of revenue for the remaining schools? Like, why would they stay uh, when it was all said and done? So, yeah, ACC knows if you lose your two big two, your, your big two, um, kind of like losing Washington, Oregon, that you, you can't stand on these other teams and hope to survive. Now, I would think, though, that wouldn't necessarily change the 14-team playoff beyond these automatic qualifiers get it hand, getting just split up and divvied up among other conferences or going to at-large bids, right? Yeah. Like, I see no reason why, because, like, the Big 12 would likely just be like, whoa, guys, what the fuck, we didn't do anything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep this, keep this. But then again, I don't know. Like, if there's uh, legalese in there, and it's not even finalized yet, so we definitely well, don't know the full I, details. I, but to me, to me, the the one worry I would have if I'm a college football fan, this is this is just a worry. This isn't. I don't know if this is a problem or not. But if, if the ACC, if if Clemson and Florida State left, and we went down the path of the demise of that conference, similar to the Pac-12, and then all of a sudden those the big the big boys in those two are not going to the Big Twelve. The UNC, the NC State, the Virginia, the Florida State, the Clemson, the Miami, they would go to the Big Ten or the SEC. And I'm sure ideally, some, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there'd be some agreement between the Big Ten and SEC of hey, we take this group, you take this group, um, because they're we, working we, together. They're, they're working have, together. Yeah, no, they are working together, but we do have to remember like every school they add to the mix is another mouth to feed. Oh, 100%. So like, remember, remember how Oregon and them had to agree mm. to take less in the short term and then eventually they'll get full membership. Sure that would be, I'm sure that'd be part of the deal too. I'm just saying, yeah. But what I'm saying is that if that happens, that hits the accelerator on what we've discussed before. Of this is just, it's two conferences and the Big 12 becomes, yeah. I think, then the Big 12 is irrelevant at that point too. I mean, if there's no ACC, I feel like the Big 12 is just kind of what's the Big 12? It's nothing. It truly is at that point. If Florida State and Clemson find a way out of this, we yeah. will get to a point where it is only the Big Ten. It is only the SEC. Oh, God damn it, Aaron Murray. Maybe you were right yesterday. Maybe, maybe this, maybe the 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 future of college football as we know it is not as secure mm -hmm. as I uh potentially felt it was with this 14 team playoff. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to be a little pretentious. And I want to read you one of my favorite quotes, and it's about uh, precedent, right? Precedents, not precedents, but precedents, plural, and the power of precedent. Um, and, and this, and this will be, this is like how you know one or two school leaving, all of a sudden everybody follows. Um, this is from Storm Before the Storm by Mike Duncan, but this is a quote from Valeus Patriculus. Say, quote: Precedents do not stop where they begin. But however narrow the path upon which they enter, they create for themselves a highway whereon they, mo they may wander with the utmost latitude. And here's a key line. No one thinks a course is base for himself, which has proven profitable to others. And think about what we've seen in college football, mm -hmm. that lightning strike of a new cycle where all of a sudden Texas and Oklahoma are leaving the big 12 and going to the sec and rawr, there was yelling and there was anger, but you know what it proved to be profitable mm -hmm. for Texas and Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So what happened next? Everybody starts to follow suit. What's Florida state clubs. Now they're trying to hop in on that highway that is starting to starting to gain in latitude, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Florida state arguing, suing the ACC. Well, if they did it, hell, if he yeah. does it right, no one thinks a course is based for himself. Well, Clemson say, we're going to sue you as well. So, I mean, it's one of my favorite quotes ever. You should lock it in, but um, yeah, it's, it's the exact path that college football is, is, is heading down right now. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see. I, again, I want to hear what uh, I want to hear what Clemson or excuse me, what yeah, Clemson has to say about why it's being uh, wrongfully applied. Um, Aaron, Kalen DeBoer, 
It's mm. going to be 10.875 million dollars this year. Um, quite the pay raise from someone who was uh, making what? Um, Probably five or six, right? Somewhere yeah, I think he was making five or six. Again, sorry, y'all. I'm coming a little half cocked on the show. He made 4.2 last season. Okay. So my man got over double, nearly triple mm. what he was making. How about the buyout? Remember, How about the buyout? Uh, what, what is the buyout? Tell me the buyout. The buyout to make you happy. Of course, Alabama's going to do it right compared to anyone else. Uh, his buyout, if he were to leave Alabama before his contract is up, is $5 million in 2024. No, wait, 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 wait. But this is if he leaves. He gets 90% of the contract if he's fired without cause. No mitigation. So mm. 90% of whatever part of the co- whatever contract he has left. And yes. it looks like he signed uh, how many eight year deal? Let's just say let's do napkin math. And I guess he's not going to leave to go to the NFL. So no, so so if he gets fired, like in two years, if he sucks and they want to fire him, they'll owe him about seventy mil. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> but I don't think Kalen DeBoer is going to suck. You know, no. um, I, I I think he's going to be. I don't big. think it's a matter of sucking. I think it's a matter of of reaching the expectations that Nick Saban set before you. No, that's, no. that's the problem. That is the exact circular conversation that people will be having about Kalen DeBoer um, for the next eight months, however long, next eight years, his whole life. I mean, it would be shocking if he can ever escape the cloud of that, right? Are you surprised that he's fourth? I mean, so he's fourth. So Dabo's won. Uh, Dabo's making $11.5 million per year. Kirby and Lincoln Riley are both making $11 million, and then DeBoer is right underneath them at 10.875. No, I'm, 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 I'm not. Wait, so, okay, Dabo 1 is a bit surprising. I don't not get it, but I'm also probably pretty salty if I'm Clemson right now mm-hmm. about it because he seems to be falling behind and refusing to um, adapt to the times. Uh, who's, who's right next to Kirby? Riley, Lincoln. Ooh. You want to talk about what have you done for me lately? That doesn't feel mm-hmm. great. Although, um, yeah, that's a little unearned. But, you mm-hmm. know, you're trying to get him from Oklahoma. You're trying to go from the sure thing. You have to pay if you yeah. want to pry somebody out of a good spot. Uh, that's not unlike Kalen DeBoer here, where, first off, if you're the Alabama coach, or excuse me, if Alabama wants me to be their head coach, and I know what Nick was making, I ain't taking less than 10. Like yeah. I'm, I'm just not doing it. I mean, hell, even even Washington I'm offered nine seven a yeah. year, right? So the number had to be higher than ten. But at the same time, if I'm Alabama, I ain't giving you a Kirby got because Kirby's got natties, yeah. and you're great. But like, will you win a natty? Then I'll give you a raise, and you'll be the highest paid coach in the entire country. So mm. this contract makes a lot of sense. You know why? Because Jimmy Sex was a fucking genius. Yeah. And and he mm. is the actual shadow lord of all of college football. Mm. 10 point. No, I agree. Like, listen, you, you, you did just make it to the national championship. Your resume is incredible. I and mean, we've hit on all the bullet points of, of why he deserves to be the next head coach of Alabama with that. The, the expectations are continue what, what Nick Saban's done. He has the resources. I anticipate him to be pretty damn good. I really do. I I, I think there's a very small step back, but I think he'll have the team competitive. I think he's making what he should be making. Like yeah. I, he should be making more than Steve Sarkeesian. We thought about yesterday when it comes to ranking coaches. He's beat Steve yeah. Sarkeesian back to back times. Even, Guess what? Even, Steve's making 10.6. Even if he hadn't beaten Steve back to back times, again, the Alabama coach has to make over 10. Yes. Like there, if you want me to be your coach at Alabama and I know you're paying Nick, there's no way I'm, I'm taking just saying, like when it, when it comes to the, but yeah, he the deserves the measuring know. contest. Yes, it is. You're, you're a tier below. You're below Kirby because you haven't won a natty. Yeah. But you are before you're ahead of Steve Sarkeesian. If we're setting the bar of where you're going to fall, no. you're above Sar- Steve Sarkeesian. And again, you understand Dabo, even though it points out just how fucking insanely hypocritical Dabo is with all of his thoughts and comments on paying players when he's making 11 5 himself. Um, and that actually is hypocrisy, unlike the Saban ordeal. But, um, but, but Lincoln's the big, you know, he's the odd mm. man out there. My boy C Rob was making 650K. Oh, I Jeez, saw that. How about C-Rob. it? Hey, bro, bro, that's my boy first, dude. 
played high school together. Uh, the JC sure. dog. Come on, his dad coached me, dude. Back off, dude. Shout out Crub. I know, I know. It's so funny because then everybody in the friend group's like, oh man, I got in the wrong business. And I'm like, oh really? You just want to work 24 fucking seven and never have a yeah. family life or any happiness? And have that's what my mom asked me the other day. She goes, what, what all the time? Because she saw that. She goes, what, what's C Rob making at Alabama? And I, I was like, probably like half a mil, maybe a little bit more. And she kind of mentioned the same thing. I'm like, yeah, but I would never see my wife or kids. Yeah, I mean, like, but it's in his DNA though. Like C Rob, well, he loves his dad. He well, loves it. That's him. My thing is. You it have to coach person. because you love coaching yes. and the money, because if your motivation is money, you it's never going to work because you don't get to spend the money. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Your like, wife does. Your wife yeah, does. You, you don't, don't get to enjoy the money every, a couple of weeks. It's like in college where we used to be able to smoke weed just for a couple of weeks a year. Mm -hmm. Uh, when they, when they couldn't drug test you, right. You maybe get a couple of weeks a year in which you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Otherwise you are locked in that building, grinding mm -hmm. tape, grinding recruiting just 24 7 grinding which if you love then hell yeah you know yeah. it's like how about this you want to hear a crazy sports stat i found this morning so i was reading uh pelicans nets play tonight i was reading about the nets um ben simmons just had back surgery he's going to be out for the year again um i kind of feel for him in the back surgery front it sounds like a pretty brutal thing but ben simmons has made a hundred million dollars in three years with the nets mm -hmm. He has barely played. If you look at Ben Simmons per point scored, per point scored, he has made $277,000 per point. That means my guy hits a layup. He's got a half a milli. Shit. God forbid he finds his way to a three. That's almost a cool mill. I love the dog. Woo! My man's Woo! making. And so, again, one of my friends is like, oh, man. Yeah, I, I wish I could have that job. Or like, good money if you get it. I was like, yeah, all you have to be is like six, six nine eight. and a generational talent that can handle like a five ten guy. And ah, man, crazy though, bro. Two seventy seven k per point mm. for Brooklyn, the finesse mm. king, Ben Simmons. Mm. Um, yeah, the unemployment king. I mean, put him on the it's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He dude. don't give a shit. He's getting paid. Yeah, I mean, no, bro. I mean, look, hey, again. You're, it's like Jalen Rose says, your worth is whatever somebody's willing to pay you. Mm -hmm. Same thing we talk about with all this NIL stuff. And you know what? Somebody at some point said that motherfucker is good enough where I'm going to give him over $100 million. And you know you had to be pretty damn good if somebody arrived at that decision, right? Mm -hmm. Like you may not have lived up to it after the contract, but you did some shit to get that contract in the first oh, place. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So shout out to the unemployed King and also shout out to the Pellies. I hope they smash the nuts tonight um, on that 52 week PTO package. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, all right. Let's get into some mailbag questions. Okay. So as always guys, we need to do a better job of pushing this, but yeah. Snaps CFB at gmail.com snap CFB at gmail.com is where you can send in emails for uh, Mailbag Tuesdays. And then we can also get to our chat questions as well. Let's go to our first one, though, from Ryan S. If mascot mode is brought back to EA NCAA, which, by the way, when are we getting the the, the college football mm. game showcase? Because mm. I thought they teased it around. Mm. Okay, I'm going to look it up. Hold on. Um, If mascot mode is brought back to EA NCAA, Mm -hmm. What is the best mascot matchup? Um, okay, I'd have to think about an opponent, but for me, Aaron, I was always a massive fan of the Syracuse Orange. Oh, uh, this is why I want to answer the damn question. I am Syracuse through and through. The Orange yeah, is the I best mean, one. I, I, I think it's the, I think it's the best talk one. answer. Yeah. It's just a bunch of Eric Mangini's running around. <laughs> the big, round, fat fucks just out there making plays. So I like the Orange. I like, as you see on the screen, I like the Duck from Miami. I like the Buckeye from Ohio State. Those are kind of my three my three go tos if I'm going mascot mode. Um, okay, the Ducks a good one. I like uh, what's um, what's Oklahoma State's the Cowboy. Yeah, Cowboys, uh, Cowboys with this big mustache and his like chaps mm -hmm. and his kind of wide legged stance. That one running around is always tight. The um, Elephant Alabama's great. Al, cuck. Hmm. Um. Wait, when is that? When is that showcase going down, though? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look at that original. Uh, that original tree. Tree. 
this I do remember. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, no, that's true. Okay, actually, yeah. that's the answer. Okay, okay, sorry, early May. My bad. I'm jumping the gun, guys. New teaser, new info early May. Thank you, PG. All right, so sorry, I got I got I got a little pumped up there. No, that's the answer. It's Stanford Tree versus Syracuse Orange. Yeah. Those big, stupid ass googly eyes against those big round Eric Mangini orange men. It's fantastic. Mm. I would have to imagine that you would you would bring back mascot mode, right? Yeah. I, I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah. Um next mailbag question. And by the way, if you want to get uh questions in the chat as well, you can just do like a hashtag snaps mailbag. Uh this comes from Troy R. Will Deion Sanders win a national championship in the next five to ten years? And what school will he be at in the next five to ten years? Uh, will he win one in the next five to ten years? I would say no. If he does win one, though, it will be at Florida. I'm going to say no because I think, what, there's like three guys that are going to – well, mm. I guess it's kind of wide open feeling. It felt like for a while there that there were maybe like one or two, maybe three that were going to win natties. Anyway, next five to 10 years, Kirby would definitely be on the list. I think Brian wins one eventually at LSU. Brian I Kelly Ryan, would be on the list. Brian Ryan Kelly, Day. I would say Brian, Ryan Day even before Brian. I would go Kirby, yes. Ryan Day, maybe then Kelly, given the last three at well, LSU. I, think, I, think if, if, I don't think, I think if Ryan Day doesn't get it done this year, then I would flip it and say BK. But, um, those are the big three. Like, if you had to say which three coaches are going to win a national championship in the next 10 years, I mean, Kirby, Caleb Moore, BK, Caleb Moore should be in that list. Absolutely. He just played for yes, one at Washington, Ryan Day. Alabama. So, no, we got to make that a foursome. Like, Kalen DeBoer has to be on that list as well for the next five to 10 years. Okay. I, 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 I feel very confident in that, but I don't feel great about like Mike Norvell. Ben. I think Mike Norvell at Florida State has an opportunity to be competitive, especially if they stay in the ACC. I would have Mike Norvell uh, like the first on my OLI outside looking in. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I would, I would have the big four and then I'd have Mike Norvell chief among the rest. Sark. Yep. Sark would be right there with Norvell. I mean, it, it just, I, where do you put Dion? Dion's kind of towards the bottom of. I, it's, it's too tough right now. Even double digits. You, look, I, I would be lying if I said that the finish. And the dysfunction with uh, his OC Elliott and some of the other mm -hmm. coach staff, like Dion had such a strong and disciplined start out of that Colorado team. And to have yeah. all these guys that were thrown together and gel in the way that they did, it was so impressive early on. But I'd be lying if I said it didn't lose a little bit of its luster mm -hmm. as they kind of faltered down the stretch. And I'm still betting on Dion long term to be a very good college coach. I don't know that I can sit here and bank on a natty yeah. in the next five to 10 though. That feels maybe a step too far right yeah, now. I agree. I agree. Um, Cause he's not going to get, he, he's not going to win a, a natty at, at Colorado. And if he does go somewhere, he's no. going to have to rebuild it a little bit. I mean, just there, there's, there's, there's the timing aspect. I'm not saying he can't rebuild fast. He did that at Colorado. He can easily do that at another location that, that has more resources than, than the buffs do. But, there's just too many other great coaches out there. I just, I think he's a little bit behind. AK says Dion doesn't recruit. I mean, that is true, man. Dion does not do high school recruiting and he's done pretty good in the portal, but nothing overwhelming. Like he's trying to go full lane Kiffin. I wonder if you can win a natty going full lane. But I, also, I also wonder too, there's, there's a couple of things that go to that one. Does he truly think that he's going to stay past his son leaving Colorado. So if you're not, then why would you waste time on recruiting high school kids into how easy is it to recruit high school kids to Colorado? It's both compared to just getting portal guys. Like you have, it, 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 it all depends. Same thing with Lane at Ole Miss. You're trying to recruit high school kids against Kirby. Yeah, no, I think, I think like, to be clear, I think you Lane, had to choose your lane. You had to choose yeah. your lane. No pun intended. Oh, yeah, exactly. No, I'm with you that. Like, I want to be clear. I'm not saying that Lane is saying I'm not into high school kids. I, I think, yeah, I think, um, well, with Lane, you never know. But, um, <laughs> but, but yes, I think at Ole Miss, to reach the heights that he has, I think he's doing it the way that you would have to, yes. which I, I guess, I guess Dion's just been more upfront than even Lane has been about like he really just does not care about high school recruiting. Which does feel a bit flawed. Maybe if he goes to Florida, that changes. Uh, he's going to need a ball out, though. Okay, Colorado's in a pretty good spot here. Uh, just in that the Big 12 doesn't have superpowers left. Mm -mm. You already beat TCU last year. K 
Can he finish middle upper pack? Yep. Like how many teams are in the big 12 this year? Are we finally back to 12? I, don't I know. believe, I believe. What, yes. what, 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 what number, what yeah. number would, would, if Florida does want to move on, what number would you think he has to hit to, to put his name in the ring? Seven, eight wins. Hmm. That's it. They would go after him, but just to, the, to be in consideration because they're not going to hire him. If he, at least he doesn't make eight, a bowl right? game. You can't go seven and six and get that job and get the Florida job, right? That's insanity. Yeah, I would think so. And even then, people are going to be worried about, well, he had Shadur, he had Travis Hunter. What's he going to do post Shadur? Like, Deion's a complicated candidate in the short term. Yeah. I think long term he'll make himself very attractive, but Florida's timeline is likely next season, right? Yeah. Um, I think the Big Twelve now has like sixteen teams in the conference. You up? Yeah, because they were at fourteen last year, but yeah, Texas Oklahoma leave, but you add yeah, the four corners, so yeah, I think we're up to sixteen teams now. Yeah, Dion would need to finish in the upper half of the yeah. sixteen. Um, George says, I don't think people care. I'll flash no sizzle, in my honest opinion. I think, see, that's the thing. I think Dion has the substance. Um, I think that I think that their whole year looks different if they don't let Aya Manor go off for 300 yards mm -hmm. and beat them in that Stanford game. Yep. Everything feels different. They hit the over on all their season win totals, the original four and a half, and it just, yeah, it all kind of fell apart. After that, Greg says he would lock down Florida. Maybe. Maybe so. Uh, Steph's mailbag. Lee P. Oh, Lance Ly oh, Leipold to Florida, says Jeff Rawlings. Yeah. I mean, I would give Ly Leipold's getting a bit up there age-wise, but you, you would have to look at you would have to look at Leipold very seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Kleeman is another name that's going to come up constantly in these conversations. Plus they're kind of being cucked in the big 12 a little bit. Right. I think Whittingham. you think Whittingham, uh, Whittingham just feels so uh, maybe stuck. Isn't the right word. Whittingham just feels so Utah through and through. I know, but especially if there is some real legs to this whole ACC thing and it does go start going the way of what we're talking about. Like you, you have to start even looking at an exit plan. If you're a coach at that point too. The big yeah. No one wants to get left to the kid's table. No. Um, <clears throat> even though I was like the kid's table at Thanksgiving, personally, me, you didn't have to sit down as long. You got to kind of go play around, maybe like eat a little bit, go out, go come back and in and eat a little bit. Um, Lori H love you, Lori. Uh, if you had to live in a time period before this one, when would you choose to live? You are still a white male. Don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm watching Shogun right now, and it doesn't seem like it pays to be a white male in Shogun. Shogun's fucking awesome, by the way. What is that on? I need a new show. FX, dude. FX. Apparently, it's based on an old book, I believe, from the 80s, and there's been a movie or TV series on it before. But if you're looking for something to fill the Game of Thrones uh, political intrigue, uh, hyper violence, like maneuvering, just wonderfulness. Um, Shogun's awesome. So it's on Hulu because Hulu is FX and whatnot. Yeah. Nice. You, you know, you can show nipple on FX now. Nice. How crazy is that? Love I mean, that. I love it. I don't know why we're so hung up with the female nipple to begin with, but um, time period before this one. Here's 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 how I always answer this. Do I have knowledge of today's time when I go back? Right. No, because no, no. if I do, I don't want to go back in time at all. You know, like I like having pants that stretch. I like air conditioning. I fucking love video games. I love the internet. I love computers. Um, if like, uh, yeah, yeah. PG says, I don't think you can for the premise to work. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're saying you just choose a time period and you're just going to be in that time period then. Yes, no knowledge. Okay, I am going to go... I kind of want to go to the late 70s and mm -hmm. just like... like Do it drugs? Issues. Yeah, just do it like smoke a lot of weed and like play football and like have sex with one girl but then not have a cell phone and maybe even have sex with a second girl you know i yeah. mean i'm just dreaming large here mm. I'm, I'm a big fan of the pirates of the caribbean you know whatever that time is as a pirate in the caribbean like that's kind of where i'm feeling it a little bit see but this is what's on an island as a pirate 
drinking fucking you know what what do you mean what do you mean what is the pirate lifestyle what you got rotted teeth horrible hygiene you're on a boat no one knows but no one knows with the boys 24 7 you're probably but then you go to the island yeah but there's two or three months where you're kind of on an island just fucking just being a degenerate you're eating fuck you got scurvy you're trying to eat lemon rind you're eating like nothing else biscuit you know nothing else you know nothing else yeah yeah, yeah. See, seventies and eighties, lots of cocaine and sex. There you go. Um, I mean, look, I now I love fantasy stuff, right? Like, I yep. love you do. I could see you now. Avo says Aaron's too pretty to make it as a pirate, but you do have a swashbuckling sense about you. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the quarterback and the Tampa in you. Mm-hmm. I know that yeah. Tampa loves pirates. The Gasparilla love pirates. Festival. I love really, pirates. Really want to go to the Gasparilla Festival yeah. one day. That's on my bucket mm-hmm. list. But um, mm, family trip. Let's go. I mean, I do love, I love Roman history too. Yeah. So probably second on my list would be mm-hmm. maybe like rise of the Roman empire, mm-hmm. like Augustus. Like I remember reading about this one guy and I can't remember his exact time period in the Roman empire, but this is how advanced they got back then. This motherfucker's whole job was to just make badass oyster beds for super rich people's villas mm. like that, that would, that, that would actually be insane. If, if you lived all the way back then and, and you, you, you had a job, like you don't have to fight. You're basically just like a landscape architect. You, you know what you are? You know what I should be based on my, my just degenerate self. I need to be in what's the place that essentially got destroyed because of volcano prior to the volcano. Um, oh, uh, uh, Pompey, 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 Pompey. Yeah, Pompey. yeah. Take me back to the prime Pompey. Um, why, why you want to die in a volcano prime before the volcano? Oh, you just want to live in like a badass Roman city. Yeah. That's basically what I'm getting at as well. Like if you were yeah. a well-off Roman, yeah. um, your quality of life was in some ways higher than ours. Now, mm-hmm. basically it's because of slavery. Now, unlike the Atlantic slave trade, which is unique in that it was racially based and fucking awful in that way, slavery in Roman times was more of just, I don't care where you're from, what color you are. I took over your people. Like, sorry, you work for me now. Eventually, maybe you get your freedom, Mm -hmm. blah, blah. It it, it was different, right? Um, But yeah, you would just have slaves doing everything for you if you were a well-off Roman, which again, Mm -hmm. sounds very fucked up. And it is fucked up. Yeah. But like, you know. If I had somebody to feed me grapes all the time, she <laughs> and just drink wine all the time. Uh, when did y'all want to go to the future instead? Why? So I can just see a bombed out apocalypse of death yeah. after we blow this planet up or eat it away. Um, mm-hmm. I, I still feel like too, there's like, I love this one. I can never square. I love medieval times. I don't mm-hmm. know that I have any desire to live in medieval times. It just seems like the shittiest time possible to be alive. Mm-hmm. Plague death uncleanliness sword fighting dark smoky rooms yes but yeah outside of that i don't know Mm. no no death and poop everywhere in rome yeah poop everywhere i mean that's just like anytime you go back in history anywhere just poop everywhere though yeah yeah i would have me paying grain or try grain tithes my fucking my 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 vassal lord to be a little surf serving him up Mm. Um. Yeah, I agree with Locke. Anytime for air conditioning and plumbing is out for me. Yeah, but you fucking don't know. You don't know. Well, and again, if you're well off enough in Roman times, you will have plumbing. Yeah. So there's that. Let's do this. Uh, get your questions in the chat, and we'll get to them right after we hear from our friends at DraftKings. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. So, you want to ride with the Cinderella throughout the tourney, or you want to keep it chalky with the one seeds, everything you need is right there at the tap of a button. And, North Carolina listeners, don't forget, DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. So. What are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use code TBOB, and new customers can bet five bucks to get one hundred fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets only 
at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TBOB, T-B-O-B. The crown is yours. Jeff Rollins says, what about, uh, what about the college football year that you could go back and play during? Ooh, um, again, I would mm. go late 70s. There is something about the late mm. 70s, early 80s era of football. And maybe just I've heard too many of my dad's stories. Um, but it just seemed like such a work hard, play hard kind of time. Mm. And I love, so there's a book, It Never Rains in Tiger Stadium, written by John Ed Bradley. And one of my favorite stories, they talk about USC coming to play LSU. And I think it was in 78, somewhere around there, sometime in the 70s. USC comes to play LSU and they describe these USC players exiting the locker room only to find a giant fucking Bengal tiger right outside of their locker roaring in its cage because that's what they used to do to Mike. They'd put him outside the opponent's uh, locker room and and like kind of tase him up a little bit and get him all frisky. Flick and, his balls. Yeah, and, and it, it makes <laughs> me think like, how fascinating would it be in a pre-internet age where maybe yeah. you're looking at magazines, you're seeing like mm -hmm. a news report about Louisiana every now and then. You're from Los Angeles, born and raised, all of a sudden you're in fucking Baton Rouge with – you know, 70, 80, however many it was, thousand screaming, insane Louisianians mm -hmm. and a giant Bengal tiger yelling at you. Pretty awesome. What a wild life experience. I saw the other day with, speaking of USC, Liner was talking about playing in the early 2000s prior to the phones. Uh, I forgot what, I think he was on Edelman show. And they were talking about, he's like, dude, we were going out with the celebrities in LA because everyone went to the same clubs and we were treated yeah. like celebrities because no one had like phones and people weren't taking wow. pictures. He's like, dude, I'm going out with like Kid Rock and this celeb and like Leo, uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm like, dude, you're going out with fucking Leo. You're the starting quarterback at USC. Crazy. I mean, yeah, that's that makes a, I could see it. That's a wild. That's a wild duo that could be dangerous. So like that seemed like a good time. But I mean, hell, today I would, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'd kick the tires around with today, knowing that I could be making, you know, seven figures is pretty sexy. That's true. Yeah. Um. Greg Hendricks says, I go back to 1890s, have a badass horse. Uh, yeah, that's also Cowboys. I like Cowboy times. Power of the Dogs, very good Cowboy movie you should watch. Um, yeah, no, I mean, true, Aaron. I'd actually probably go to today because I'd make more money than I make as an adult. And it probably, well, well, I probably may have fucked up my whole life. If I didn't fuck it up, it, it would have given you a really great way to start your life out on. Yeah. Um, snap, smell back. What food and items are your followers leaving at the feet of your shrine? Asked Goat Dog. So, of course, um, Nick Saban's followers left oatmeal cream pies and Diet Cokes. Uh, for me, it would be sesame seed chicken. Cigarettes. Um, okay, guys, I don't like... I, yes, I love tobacco, okay? But I do not want to paint an accurate picture, okay? I do not smoke often. Um, I maybe enjoy, on average, one cigarette a week. It is a treat that I give myself. Okay. So no, you would not leave cigarettes at my shrine. You would leave sesame seed chicken and marijuana is what you would leave at my feet. Mm. The cheeky sig. Thank you, PG. That's all it is. It's just, it's, it's like, it's like in a house of cards. Yeah. Before we all started hating Kevin Spacey, how him and his wife would smoke a cigarette at the end of like the day or something. Mm. Nice bottle of wine and some pot roast. We know it's not going to be a beer. Do you just pot roast? Beer. People yeah. just gonna be leaving just straight pot roast. Straight pot roast. Baby. Hell yeah! Is that your favorite food? Just like love some, yeah, pot roast. Love yeah. some pot roast. Love pot roast. It's great. Yeah. Served over. Served over some, rice. Made a little Sweet creatine potatoes. too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Maroni Lane music. What super villain would you compare Dabo to? Who's the most? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When somebody really grates on your nerves, who's the most pretentious um, supervillain? He would be. He would be one of those supervillains. And I'm not coming up with a villain right now, but I, I do have a villain archetype. You know where you have the bad guys that are so obsessed with being good mm -hmm. that they're like, we have to, like, you know, it, like they're 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 fanatics essentially, right? Like any toe out of line, and you deserve to die because this is how it should be, and this is the right way to do things. Mm -hmm. So, so he's like a like a religious zealot that has lost his way and is willing to kill for what he views as being right. Mm. Someone in Game of Thrones. Um. Wait, wait, for what? Oh, for Dabo? Yeah. Who would it be in Game of Thrones? I feel like someone that 
that type of villain in, in, a, in a show like that, where you have the power, you play by the rules. I'm trying to think of who, um, um, oh, uh, maybe like a Stannis Baratheon is not unlike that. Mm-hmm. He was someone who was uber committed to the rules, uh, to a fault until he kind of low oh, peacemaker says, George Peacemaker, little finger, little cool finger guy. at all. No, 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 no. Little finger's a fucking schemer. Little finger is uh, Sexton climbing up the ranks to take everything over. Little finger mm-hmm. is someone who does it in the shadows. Um, not, not Davo. Uh, Davo would be Monarch from the Venture Bros. I don't know if you've ever seen Venture Bros, but I really like the Monarch answer <laughs> actually quite a bit. Um, Chicken Bone News wants to know what kind of wine Aaron Boone's farm. Nice little cab. Nice little cab. You know, plan, you know, plan a trip right now to. Uh... To Napa with the wife in May. So T Ball will be solo while I'm getting drunk, but Napa Cab. Napa Cab. The uh you ever get prisoner out of Austin? I have some I've had some prisoner before. Or is, is hope is hope out of Austin? But I, I don't love, think prisoners out of I think prison is out of California though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm being dumb. I think hope hope is out of Austin, also very good. But if I want to treat myself, a bottle of prisoner is kind of my go to. You want to know my one time I drank Boone's farm, what happened? I never met Boone. So I never drank Boone's farm in high school. I never drank wine. But a lot of my Louisiana DJ and friends did growing up. It looks like blue Kool-Aid, just ridiculous wine. But uh, we were drinking a shit ton of Boone's farm. And that night I put in two horseshoe dips. I filled my entire bottom lip with dip and I filled my entire upper lip with dip. And then I tried smoking a cigarette at the same time. What the fuck is wrong And I puked everywhere and i threw up so hard that i popped all the blood vessels in my face and i looked like a freak i looked like uh i looked like lois griffin in that episode of family guy when she doesn't have her makeup on it was Mm -hmm. it was just really unsettling looking Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. um fun show oh is that is that what you're trying to do here yeah is that what you're trying to do here? What do you mean? Mm-hmm. Hey, Alvo Marzwani, guess what, dude? I started watching a new anime last night. You're a fucking asshole. And it's on uh what is it on? Oh, it's on Max. And I can't remember the name of it. It's like Kiddo Kakuni or something. I don't know. It's badass though. It's a ninja dude, his wife and son get killed, and next thing you know, he's just doing crazy ninja shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, one day I'll finish Demon Slayer. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it. Um, all right, y'all. Thank you so much. Hit the like button, sub the channel. It would make our day if mm. we come in here Thursday and we're at 15K. Please come on. share the good word, my friends. Um, tell your friends about it if you enjoy the show. If you're listening on podcasts, you can always review. You can follow us on uh, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff at volume snaps. Yeah, the double horseshoe, John. That was mm. it was intense, bro. Uh ninja ninja kamui. I don't I don't think I'm saying that right, but thank you, Thomas. That's what it is. Um, all right. We love you, and we will see you Thursday for a brand new Snaps Live. Have a great day, y'all.